Hi everybody and uh, welcome to the, uh, the next episode of Show Us Your Kids here at Hobbies Australia. Uh, a little bit of a, a variation today on what we normally do where traditionally we re review new release uh, plastic model kits. Today we're going to talk about a, a range of new products from the brand Vallejo out of Spain. Uh, these items have just arrived in our warehouse and are currently being checked off and packed away and we'll hopefully be dispatching these to retail stores uh, by the end of this week and they'll be available in stores and online by early to middle next week. Now the two items that we're looking at today are part of the Vallejo Scenics range and the first item we're going to be looking at today is their new stencil range. Okay, 30 different stencils in various scales are 172nd, 148, 135th and 132nd scale with a recommended retail price of between $9 and $15. Now these are some really nice bits and pieces. So we've got the traditional military style stencils, so we've got camouflage, we've got American star insignia, um, German camouflage patterns. Uh, etc etc we've also got uh, items for armor for aircraft for uh, building uh, type arrangements cracked pavements cracked window panes that sort of stuff some really really nice things so what we thought we'd do today is actually crack one of these out of the packet and we'd actually use one and show you what it is where these are all about so what we did last night was got a sheet of white cardboard okay fairly straightforward okay boom white cardboard from the local news agency Put up a little bit of a frame with some blue painters tape okay then what i wanted to do was to get a little bit of a textured effect okay so what i've chosen to do here is using the vallejo earth texture uh, from their scenic diorama uh, range i've basically applied that to my little frame there just using uh, a normal piece of sponge so as you can see there uh, i think ryan's picked up the texture there pretty well and that's what i'm trying to achieve on this thing um, what I want to do is do a representation of um, the side of a, a, a pre-World War II or World War II era French garage. Um, and what I'm going to do there is, as you can imagine, those buildings weren't the sort of thing that we're used to now. There'd be a rough textured finish, you know, similar to what you see on this model here. Um, and what I'm going to do is we're going to, to actually tape this down. And then just using um, a Vallejo aerosol that's going to give us a nice contrast, we're going to quickly spray this so you can see what the end result is. Lots and lots of options with this stuff. Really nice gear, keenly priced, rolling into stores, uh, available online and in stores middle of next week. So let's have a look at this. Let's see how it comes up. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a, a, a blue painter's masking tape, which is low tack. Um, and by just putting it onto my pants here, I'm just taking a little bit more of the stickiness off. Now, as you can see here, we've got the main feature of what will be the mural, the decal, uh, garage, uh, parry, and then we've got these borders around here. So look, if I was doing this uh, on, you know, on a model of my own, what I'd probably be doing is I'd have a contrast color underneath, a nice backing color, um, and then what I would do is probably pick out the border um, with a dark color. And then being French, okay, probably all white, and then I would mask it off and I'd probably go blue for the first third, white for the second third, red for the final third. On the side of a building, um, you know, early uh, World War II, late World War II, troops, either German or Allied, marching past it, probably some civilians, um, various options with, with vehicles, um, civilian vehicles, military vehicles, etc., etc. But this range of stencils, from Vallejo is really, really nice. As you can see there, it's plastic. Now, a lot of the main um, stencils that are currently available in the market are either cardboard or metal. Now, metal can be a bit of a bear to conform to the surface. Cardboard, um, okay, but over a period of time, being the fact that we're putting paint on there, it's a liquid, it's going to deteriorate, and eventually that cardboard stencil is going to, be need, is going to need to be replaced. Plastic ones, quickly and easily washed off, rinsed off, um, and away you go from there. We can use uh, aerosol cans, rattle cans. We could use a spray brush, a spray brush, or we could even use a sponge, depending on the sort of effect that we want to achieve with the stencil. Um, I'm gonna use the rattle can today because it's easy um, and it's quick 
and we can hopefully get a decent result for you. So okay, let's have a look. So using from, again from Vallejo, um, from their excellent range of 400ml aerosol paints, um, I'm going with the, um, the Bone White, um, because I just think it'll give a, a nice um, contrast to the earth texture um, that I used. Now why did I use that? Because quite simply, that was what was in the workshop at home um, when I did this late last night. So, hopefully, because we're in an enclosed room, hopefully I won't gas over all night, but let's see how we go. Okay, so um, I, I guess the problem I'm going to have here, if I do this on an angle, okay, I'm going to run the risk of the paint running down um, and not getting as crisp a finish as I, I would hope. So, um, Let's try it this way and let's see how we go, all right? So slow, even bursts, um, starting before the stencil and finishing after the stencil. going to go there at right angles and I'm sure there's purists out there who are probably having a fit watching what I'm doing but that's okay I can live with that all right so that's just it nice and quick nice and simple give it a couple of minutes to dry and then we'll check it out okay um, as always when I finish with my rattle can turn it upside down depress the nozzle wait till it turns clear that way I know I've cleared the nozzle and that's not going to be clogged up and fouled up for next time I go to use it all right let's see how this comes out now Okay, so just peeling this back now, just quickly let's have a look at that. Okay, a little bit of overspray. If you noticed how I was using that aerosol can, you know, there was always a good chance that was going to happen. But if we look around here on these fine defined lines, I mean, there is some really, really nice um, finishes there. You know, uh, if I was going to be doing this on my own model, obviously I wouldn't be rushing as quickly as I am now. But as you can see there, that's got some real potential. Um, I don't know if the quality of the picture will show up um, on the on the overall texture and the finish etc but all in all that's a that's a fairly credible effort I think um, I could certainly be very happy with that all right so look what we've found is that because we're really really are rushing this um, I haven't got the stencil down as flat uh, on the on the surface that I would really like and would really need to get a, a super super sharp effect um, I guess that's one of the the, the, the joys of doing these demonstration videos. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, what I've got now is just a, a flat piece of card. We've got um, this stencil down as tightly as I can get it uh, because I'm really keen to show you how well these will uh, uh, come up when they're, when they're done properly. So, you know, if I was at home in my own workshop, if I had the various tools, if I didn't have to worry, worry about making allowances for the camera, um, we would have got this knocked over in probably one go. But, um, you know, we're really keen to show to you just how good this product is. So, let's see how this comes up. Okay, boom, there you go. Now look, for a very, very rushed job, um, that's not a bad effort at all. Um, you know, if, if I was in my own workshop at home, if I had my tools, my airbrush, uh, I'd be doing a lot more attention to detail. But, you know, for a five minute job um, with some blue tack paper, uh, some blue, blue tack tape um, and a rattle can, that's come up pretty good. Um, you know, you can see that textured finish on the, on the back surface. Um, I'll just quickly, let's just see if I can get this off without shredding it. We should be able to, okay. Um, maybe, you know, if the next time I do something like this for a demonstration purpose, maybe I'll use a sheet of evergreen plastic, um, something like that, um, just to give you a better idea. But, you know, here we go. It's coming off okay. Gives the image. So bang, there you go. Uh, Garage Paris, um, textured finish. Everything on there done by the from the Vallejo range, um, you know, available in a hobby store near you. Um, the other, the other new product that's included in this shipment from Vallejo uh, is their new grass tufts. Don't know if you can see that. Okay, there's 34 different types. Uh, they have a little, um, they're, they're double-sided tape mounted, but we can certainly glue those down. 
There's traditional wargaming colours and styles, various lengths, and there's also fantasies. So really bright and vibrant purples, blues, pinks, that sort of thing. Retailing from between eight and $11. Again, this stock has just arrived here at Hobbies Australia and it will be shipping out to stores later this week and available in stores and online as of next week. So again, great new products from the layer, all here now at Hobbies Australia and shipping out now to help you guys out there with your, uh, your COVID boredom busters. So until uh, next time we see you here, remember please hit that like button, tell us what we're doing right, tell us what we're doing wrong. Uh, let's have some feedback on what you'd like to see. Um, and until next time, when we ask you to show us your kits, I'm Andrew from Hobbies Australia. Take care, stay safe, build more kits.